Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I want to go over a couple of different ways that you can get a collection of objects and show the performance differences and my preferred technique. So first, I'm just going to press play, and you'll see the enemy manager here is just going to spawn 100 enemies. So let's let that happen. There we go. We have 100 enemies. And now our player script has a couple options on here. We can toggle on an option to get all of the enemies by a tag. We can get the game objects of the enemies by tag. We can get them by component or we can get them by a cached list. And I'm going to step through these and see what each one does and how it performs. So to start off, let's just go with get by tag. And let's see, you can see already that the profiler kind of started to spike up here. Let's just take a look at any random frame. It's calling this every frame so we can get a really easy view into what's happening. So here you see get enemies by tag is taking about half a millisecond with only a hundred enemies and nothing else going on in the game right and then part of that is because we are calling the get component so we're getting the game object and then we have to get the component let's take a look at how that works so let me jump over to the enemy manager and if we look at get enemies by tag um, where's that at? That is right here. So we have to get all of the enemies. So first we have to get all of the game objects by tag. Then we have to go through each one and get the enemy component. Now if we just want to get the game object and we don't care about a specific component on them, the timing is a little bit better. So let's see what that looks like. Jump back over and on the player I'm just going to check the get game objects by tag. This does the same thing without the get component call. So here we go, let's take a look and get enemies by tag is at 0.44 and get game objects by tag is dramatically lower, right? 0 0.3, you know, it's really, really low, although it does generate a little bit of garbage. And the, the downside here is that at this point we only have a game object, so if we're trying to access some component on there, our timing is actually gonna go up to closer to this get enemies by tag. Now, the third option here is get by component. So let's just see how that works. So check out the performance first and then we'll look at the code. So here if we use get enemies by component, you can see it's faster than get enemies by tag. Um, it's still slower than get game objects by tag. In fact, in this frame it was actually, yeah, in this frame it's pretty close to get enemies by tag, but it's a bit faster and it's generating a little bit less garbage right it's about um, about half the garbage right there so 1.6 versus 3.1 and on occasion it does seem to spike up a little bit higher and I want to show you that code real quick and then we'll jump over to the fastest method so get enemies by component is just calling find objects of type enemy and our enemy script is actually really simple so let's take a look at it it does absolutely nothing in the update. It just calls a method called do bad stuff and doesn't log because that'll kill our profiler results. And then one thing that you can see in here is that I also have a static list of enemies, just called all enemies. And then in the on enable method, we initialize that list if it hasn't happened yet. And then we add the current enemy to that list of enemies. And on disable, we just remove it. So that way this list always contains all of the active and enabled enemies. Let's see how that one performs. So jump back over, select the player. Oh, maybe I'll select the player this time. And just call get by list. Or check that one. Now let's look at the profiler again. And if you look, you'll see that the get enemies from list is at zero milliseconds and zero garbage collection. And that's going to be pretty steady. You're not going to get any real hit there. That's because we're keeping track of them at runtime. And we're keeping track of them when they need to be when they're enabled and disabled so we don't have to go find them every time and this is really the best way to do it um, if you're using a pooling system that's usually even better and you can keep track of the active objects of the specific type in your pooling system and then you can access this kind of data even easier but if you're not using pooling you can do something as simple as a static list like this so again it's just a static list of the type that's on the class and then on enable adds it to the list on disable removes it and let me show you the code real quick that's pulling that in so it's right here get enemies from list just returns enemy the class type dot all enemies because it's static it's just the class and then the met or the uh, the field right here or the property I guess it is 
So next time you find yourself searching for a collection of objects at runtime, especially in a highly called thing like an update loop, consider putting in a manager there to keep track of them or even something as simple as a static collection that's on the class. It'll help you out with performance and it'll reduce garbage collection, make your life a little bit easier. Alright, if you like this video, don't forget to like and hit subscribe and thanks for watching.